funny thing, when we finished Lord of the Rings, uh, Peter said he never wanted to see another Hobbit in his life. And um, I think we all said we agree. <laughs> so it was probably three or four years ago when Peter you know, first talked with us about doing Hobbit and uh, at that time it was Guillermo del Toro was going to be involved and we were all excited about the whole process and Hobbit by that time has been 10 years and it feels like time to return home a little bit. We'd done such a great job on Lord of the Rings we all were pretty excited about getting back into it now and so it was with expectation and excitement that we, we looked upon doing Hobbit again. In a sonic sense, and very much in a movie making sense, it's returning to this world of Middle Earth. I think it does so with incredible storytelling, and it really honors that world that we kind of built and achieved in Rings, but with a completely different story and a different cast. I think it's just going to be a lot of fun to see the audience respond to that and enjoy that as well. The benefits of being in New Zealand on a film like this is that everything is very nearby and you do not have to go very far to get completely away from civilization. So you're, you get into environments very quickly where you don't have issues around traffic, around kind of flight paths, around all these things that generally happen in kind of larger uh, cities that generally support film industries. And we built up the library basically the two years, three years that we worked on Lord of the Rings. And in that time, it became a real seminal library. It was pretty much the basis of our libraries moving forward, but the library itself was all recorded at 16-bit 44K, so it actually got quite tired fairly quickly. And on The Hobbit, although we wanted to pay homage to Lord of the Rings and the environments, we had to kind of really refresh it with a lot of new material, high bit rate, kind of high resolution microphones now being the norm. We had an opportunity to kind of refresh the library in a way. We um, did a lot of trips, getting ambiences around New Zealand. It's a, um, very easy for us to just drive out of the city for half an hour and suddenly you're somewhere quiet where you can do anything. So we do a lot of recording outside, of props even. We did some caving, that was quite interesting. We went and spent a couple of days in some caves in Waitomo. We also did some impulse responses in the caves, which Justin Webster used to great advantage. So it's been pretty interesting actually. Um, if there's a sound required in the film and we don't have it. We like to just go and get it. I'm a hobbit from the Shire. Oh, we like goblins as bats and fishes, but we hasn't tried hobbies before. Is it soft? Is it juicy? No, no, keep, keep, keep your distance. I'll use this if I have to. I, I, I don't want any trouble, you understand? Just show me the way to get out of here, and I'll be on my way. Peter Jackson's involvement in the sound, he's very involved in the sound, and you can listen to these movies, and his hand is all over it, uh, guiding it, pretty much, along with Fran Walsh. The dynamics that Pete builds in visually, he builds in sonically as well. And they do that, you know, again, it's emotional scenes that get to pay off. They go to have some action scenes. It's this constant dynamic not to wear the audience out, but to take them on a journey or an adventure. We have new creatures in Hobbit, who are these goblins who are kind of underground, kind of little ratty, nasty little pieces of work. And they needed a quite a different a vocal sound to vocals we'd actually had in the past. And I think Dave Whitehead did a, you know, an awesome job. It wasn't kind of a place he arrived at on day one. It took some time to get that kind of vocal tuned in to where we needed it to be. <laughs> The dialogue tracks are interesting because we've got black speech and we've got goblins, we've got Goblin King, we've got all of these orky sounding goblin creatures that are screaming at you because they're ferociously angry and terrified and mad and wanting to kill so many dwarfs. Clarity isn't a major issue. The scare factor is what we're trying to achieve. The, the bone chilling 
nature of Azog. So it's a deep, guttural vocal, and you can feel the hatred, and you can feel the power in that. You think of Lord of the Rings in Middle-earth, and right away comes to mind is uh, Howard Shore, I have to say, and the score and the music. You think of all these wonderful themes from Lord of the Rings into new themes now. Um, one of the funnest things about The Hobbit is that the opening just kind of brings you back to this great world that is like an old friend. And you hear the themes of the music and you're like, oh, th this is awesome. 10 years ago when the first Lord of the Rings, when people were, this is great and fun, it harkens back to, you know, seeing an old friend again and, and revisiting old friends and you do and it, it's really fun. He's a very hands-on director when it comes to the mix, and working with him is just a pure joy. He has some pretty high expectations. However, sitting in my chair, the one thing that's really wonderful is that he is incredibly patient, incredibly understanding, and he values people's opinions. But having said that, he knows what he wants, and he knows what he's trying to get out of the track. And even, you know, when we've been working on it for months on end, he brings in new information about what's happening in the scene that we, we don't always have a complete grasp on. And so one of the things I like about working with Pete the most is that he very quickly lets you know where the storyline is and how to address that sonically. Peter's really enthusiastic about sound and when we brought the idea of going to the Dolby Atmos system for Hobbit, you know, the first thing, he, he wanted to hear it, he wanted to experience it and feel what it was like. And once he'd experienced it, he was on board and wanted to use it for The Hobbit. And he's embraced it, he's sort of progressed, you know, his main focus is on the 7.1 to start with and making sure that the 7.1 release is as great as it can be. And uh, then he's really spent time giving notes and crafting the Atmos as well, like picking out things that can be a point of difference between the two mixes and really giving it a, a slightly different flavor but with the, same, with the same intent and with the same focus on story and what's going on on the screen. Dolby Atmos for The Hobbit is something that we've been looking forward to. The new technology and everything it offers in terms of, a, of bringing the audience into the audio experience that is Atmos. It allows us not only to enhance what the audience feels, but it allows us to take a moment like the simple thing, like blunt the knives. Blunt the knives, we've got plates flying around, we've got vocals coming all around us. We can now put them overhead and the clarity that it allows us to do is fantastic. And we haven't been able to do that with the 7.1 mix. The exciting part for me is actually just taking something that, that feels like, like a package up front and just spreading it to give more space for everything to live and breathe in the soundtrack. And I think we get a lot more clarity and I love the way the music sounds uh, being full range. There's a couple scenes when they fall down the chutes into Goblin Town. Peter really wanted to have it feel like nightmarish. And so in the Atmos system you really feel the added layers of sound to the mix to make you feel feel this nightmare of like, not just volume, but a power of, of everything around you and you're stuck in the middle with our heroes. It's a bit of a family sort of feel, the team that work with any of Peter's films. Peter loves to work with the crews that he knows and trusts. And I think it's a two-way street. We, we have a great respect for his ability as a storyteller, as a filmmaker. And we look at Philippa Boyens and we look at Fran Walsh and Peter and the team spirit that they provide is encouraging and takes us to a whole new level. I think it does make a difference how people work together. And I think it all comes down to passion. Each person on this board is very passionate about the sound of the film, and that's a great thing. A tale or two to tell when you come back. Can you promise that I will come back? No. And if you do, you will not be the same. My name is Bilbo Baggins. Baggins.
Mortiza Backlenses. <laughs> <laughs>